Arsenal's next three signings are set to be revealed. We're going to break down who those three players are. We're going to talk about Arsenal's 2-1 loss to Liverpool in the early hours of last night and why the reaction from some fans is a little bit over the top. But that, that's just football fans in general. When Tottenham beat the Korean eleven the other day, our fans were going berserk. But we're here to talk about Arsenal. We've already dropped a video on the channel today talking about Manchester United as they are heavily linked with Ivan Tony. So make sure you go and check that out. The road to 20,000 subscribers is well and truly on. We want to try and hit that as soon as we can. We're pushing 14, uh, sorry, 16,500. And of course, the like game is incredibly strong. Some videos hitting 17, 18, 1900 likes. So if you're enjoying the content, please do go down, show your appreciation, put a thumbs up, leave a comment, and all that good stuff. Now, Arsenal lost yesterday, or sorry, today, early hours of the morning. Um, they lost 2-1 to Liverpool. And a lot of Arsenal fans, absolutely furious. Absolutely furious. The fact that, you know, they lost the game. And by all means, the result I've always thought in preseason isn't the most important thing. It's the performance. For me, it's always the performance over the result in preseason because you can lose a game but still play very, very well, just be unlucky, whereas you can win a game but there'd be glaring errors or glaring mistakes that a team just didn't capitalise on. Now, of course, Liverpool did look very good. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, Mohamed Salah and Carvalho on the score sheet and Kai Havertz played in midfield yesterday, but I don't really get too much the Arsenal lineup. Um, now, of course, this was an Arsenal team with no no Timber, no Calafuri, no Saka, no um, no Saliba, no. I believe there was no. Oh no, there wasn't Martinelli. In terms of first team players, Havertz, Martinelli, Odegaard, Gabriel, and Ben White, Kivior, Zinchenko. Partey, Jesus, Nelson are all very rotational. Nelson's being heavily linked to a move away to a move to Leicester. So I'm not entirely sure why um, he got a huge amount of game time. Maybe that move may, be, may be getting delayed. They brought in Ketia, who's heavily linked to a move to Marseille. Leandro Trossard, Jorginho, Fabio Vieira, Miles, Louis, Skelly, uh, Nicholas, Nwanyeri, Haven, um, and then as you can see, a lot of other of the academy players stayed on the bench. Now, I don't think Arsenal played horrendous. I don't, I'm not buying into what some of the papers are saying. They, they were horrendous. They were awful. Liverpool dominated them. Liverpool did look good in the transitions. Arsenal dominated possession. The match stats are pretty even. You know, three shots more than, than Liverpool, but Liverpool had two more shots on target. Passing for accuracy is pretty even. Arsenal had a lot more passes, corners, Arsenal had more corners. But, you know, the result is not the most important thing. It's the performance of me now. In terms of Arsenal, now, they are being heavily linked to Leroy Sane, Mikel Moreno, there's a verbal agreement. But what I want to talk about is Nico Williams. Because Barcelona, whether you believe the reports or the media outlets or the journalists or the reporters, whatever you want to call them, whether you believe them or not, they could only sign one of Danny Almo or one of um, Nico Williams. Now, Danny Almo is very, very close to a move to Barcelona. Uh, personal terms have been agreed, according to Fabrizio Romano. And they look very, very, very... It's very likely now that Danny Almo is going to sign for Barcelona which opens up a potential move for Premier League clubs for Nico Williams. Exclusive Barca reach agreement with Danny Olmo on contract until June 30th, June, uh, 2030, sorry. And the new official bid, details of the new proposal is 55 million guaranteed, 4 million add-ons, um, three difficult add-ons. Olmo agrees six years. He strongly wants Barca. Uh, as he is a Catalonian, it makes sense to go back to his home club. Now, where does, where does, Nico Williams end up. Now, according to reports, some reports, 
He wants to stay at, um, he wants to stay at, you know, um, Athletic Bilbao with his brother for another season. Other reports are saying do not rule out any move to the Premier League. Now, I don't, I'm not ruling out any move at this moment in time for Toffee. I, I'm not ruling out anything. The Premier League window is well and truly underway. Anything can happen at any any minute. I genuinely think that right now, I, I, I would not be surprised if a Premier League club puts a late bid in for Nico Williams. I'm not necessarily saying that as Arsenal, but I'm just saying do not rule out anything at this stage. Now, another thing that, that's worth uh, talking about is Leroy Sane. Now, there's a lot of traction with regards to Leroy Sane to Arsenal. Could he end up being a, an Arsenal player? Who knows? I personally think that... I personally think that when I look at Arsenal's front line, Leroy Sane comes in and improves it for me personally. But it's that wage demands. So then, you, then you've also got the likes of Victor Jokirez. You've also got the likes um, of Enketia to be sold. There's a lot of movement going to happen in the Arsenal camp in the next two to three days. Now, as it stands right now, uh, Fabrizio Romano said very late last night, Arsenal have got an agreement in place, a verbal agreement in place um, for the likes of Marino. So they are focusing on that deal at the moment, and then they will focus on one more forward. 14 hours ago, um, Fabrizio Romano said Arsenal are closing in on Mikel Marino deal as verbal agreement is now getting closer. Agreement in place on personal terms as Marino wants to move. A verbal discussions with Real Sociedad for a package in excess of 30 million euros. Talks on to get the deal done. Now, people are saying the deal should be done by the middle of next week. We should get a here we go by the middle of next week for Arsenal signing him. When I look at... When I look at... This signing, I think in general, it will be a very, very good um, signing for for Arsenal. But then it's about what happens in the remainder of the transfer window. Do they bring in a Victor Jokirez? Do they bring in a Nico Williams? Do they bring in a Leroy Sane? There's even some reports out there saying Ivan Tony could still end up at Arsenal. So for me personally, I think they need to bring in one more forward. Now, it depends what Arteta wants. If Arteta wants a wide man who is brilliant in the 1v1s, great in the transition, has got lightning pace, you look at someone like Leroy Sane. If he's happy with his wide options, if Reese Nelson's going to stay and you want to bring in a goal machine, you look at someone like Victor Jokirez. Now, Eddie and Ketia, there, there was a, a deal on the table yesterday from Marseille with regards to him. Now I look at... Now I look at the fact that he played last night or come off the bench last night probably means that may be his last game in an Arsenal shirt. When I when you also look at the fact that Arsenal need uh, to sell both of these players in order to, to justify a big, big move because it will really help their FFP. And one other thing that I wanted to talk about as well is Man United last night, Rashford got injured or looked injured, Rasmus Hoyland is injured, Lenny Oro is injured. Use that as an example, the fact that you need squad depth. One of the most important things, a lot of Arsenal, Arsenal fans always say to me, Henry, we need more squad depth. Henry, we need this. Henry, we need that. Now, I, I look at Arsenal in the sense that I think genuinely this, this window if they bring in a Victor Jokirez, is a 10 out of 10 window. You know, Marino, Jokirez, Calafiori, Smith Rowe, Inketia, Nelson all go out the door. Now, there was, I'm just trying to find the report at the moment. There was a deal on the table yesterday for um, from Marseille for the likes of Eddie Inketia. Now, when I, when I look at Arsenal, you know, you've also got Thomas Partey's future is not certain whether he's gonna whether he's gonna stay or go. I do expect a lot of moves in and out of um, in and out of Arsenal, a lot of links in the next few days. 
Let me know your thoughts down below with regards to um with regards to you know Leroy Sane, Yoki Rez. I think I don't think it's realistic that Arsenal bring in both of them, but what I would say is uh if if they manage to get rid of Smith Rowe, Eddie and Ketia and Reese Nelson, then it's very likely Arsenal make a big move this summer purely on the fact that it will balance out their FFP massively. Now, one player that's being linked again is Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez. He's another player who's been he's, he's been getting um, quite a lot of traction. Quite a lot of traction with regards um, to him. Now, another player I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about Aaron Ramsdale. Now, Court Offside have put out saying uh, Arsenal ace Aaron Ramsdale steer, uh, still in career limbo. That means there will be no passengers in Arsenal's quest for glory. And that's exactly what keeper Aaron Ramsdale has been ever since the arrival of David Raya. Arteta has only given the England international um, barely minutes uh, because obviously they've got David Raya. He's only really played in um he's only really played in cup games. He's had the occasional league start. It's quite um it's completely quiet now with regards to Aaron Ramsdale. He told Court of Side this is Romano. Uh, his exclusive daily briefing has now been uh, no new movements or updates for a while now. So we'll have to see what happens later in the window. Based on goalkeepers domino, if he does end up leaving Arsenal then yes, guys, they could need one more goalkeeper. Now, it's going to be interesting for Aaron Ramsdale because he was heavily linked to a move to Newcastle and even Chelsea before that. But when you look at Aaron Ramsdale, when you look at his, um, when, when you go on to like his actual data, I, I don't, I don't think that Ramsdale is worth. I don't know what I think someone quoted the other day. 60 million pounds. He's 26. Transfer market value, uh, value at 25 million euros. He's a good goalkeeper, but I just think he's ruined his reputation a little bit with some of the interviews he's done. He signed the last contract extension May 18th, 2023. His contract expires June 30th, 2026. He's homegrown English tax, obviously very, very important. In terms of stats by club, you know, David Ray, I played a hell of a lot of games. He's only played 89 games for Arsenal. So it'd be interesting to see what happens in the next coming days. He only played one of their Champions League games um, last season. He only played three games in the Europa League for, um, for Arsenal. Only made 78 Premier League appearances. You know, it'd be interesting to see if they do sell him or they keep him as a number two. Let me know your thoughts down below. What would you do? Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you have subscribed. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.